Hello, I'm Chris from Techspert, and if you're after a banging new camera phone on a budget, well, could this be it? The Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G. This sleek looking smartphone boasts a fresh new Polar Ace imaging system comprised of three 50 megapixel cameras around back as well as a 50 meg selfie shooter. You've also got swift battery charging, you've got plenty of gim and grunt stuffed in there. Gorgeous AMOLED display backed by stereo Dolby Atmos speakers. All kinds of clever bollocks tech, so certainly the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G sounds like an absolute blinder on paper. Let's see if it's any good. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! But first of all, what do you get stuffed inside of that rather sizeable, although admittedly not particularly thrilling box? Well, let's start with the actual phone box. So we've got a snazzy looking, if clunkily titled, Camon 30 Premier 5G. Got a big old beefy Techno 70 watt charger, USB charging cable. You've got a screen protector and installation tools, although my review model actually already has a screen protector slapped on it. And rather than just bunging a bog standard condom case in the box, Techno has actually kindly covered quite a nice rigid cover. So that's it for the regular phone box, but then you also get some Techno Buds 3 bundled. And these are apparently not sold separately, so the only way of grabbing these is actually by buying a Techno 30 Premier 5G or one of the other Techno phones, presumably. And the case feels incredibly light and plasticky, but hey, it's a pair of true Alice earbuds that you get chucked in there for now. All right, so I've had my SIM slapped inside of the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G for a couple of days now. Gotta say, liking it so far. Now, as far as the design goes, the Camon kind of feels like one of Jamie Oliver's Italian restaurants. It's a definite step up from a little chef, but it kind of gives a veneer of premium rather than actually being top quality stuff. Apparently that frame is constructed from aerospace grade metal. And certainly the Camon 30 Premier 5G has proven pretty hardy these past couple of days. I've banged it about the place, no nicks or scuffs anywhere so far. You've also got Gorilla Glass 5 protecting that display. You've actually got pre-installed screen protector slapped on there too, so double the protection. Around back, you've got a soft touch finish apart from this wee strip here, which actually feels more like plastic. And apparently this sports a hydrophobic coating, so water droplets cluster on it. Let's test it out, shall we? Well, I'm not really seeing much cluster in there, to be perfectly honest. So basically just try not to spill your pint on it. It is at least IP54 splash resistant, but it can't tolerate too much of the wet stuff. I'm certainly getting budget Xiaomi 13 Ultra vibes from this back end. I think that's because of the way that the arse gently slopes upwards as we head towards the camera bump. And this textured back adds a wee bit of grip and it prevents the Camon 30 Premier 5G from just gliding off of the arm of a sofa. It does feel a bit gritty and grainy though, but at least it doesn't pick up greasy fingerprints or scuffs. Generally this phone stays looking pretty slick and neat. And hey, it's got its own vibe going on. It's rather distinctive, but it is also a proper full-on chongster, as you can see there, getting up there with the likes of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And at 210 grams, it's got a proper full-on heft to it as well. This is a heavy morpho. This right here is the snowy silver model, but you can also grab the Camon 30 Premier 5G in lava black. Now, when you actually want the Camon 30 Premier 5G to do something, well, you'll have to unlock it first, of course, with your in-display fingerprint sensor, which I've had absolutely zero jip from. Seems to do the job nicely. Otherwise, you've got the usual face and lock shenanigans, complete with an Apple-style rip-off dynamic floater jobby. And as always, that software is a good bit of the HiOS launcher slapped on top of Android 14. And HiOS, not one of my favorites. For one, if you swipe right from the main desktops, you'll bring up what's known as the zero screen, which always seems to take a little while to kick into action. And this is just a series of widgets that have just kind of been slapped on there with seemingly very little thought. But hey, you can at least drag down that notifications bar with a quick swipe like so. You've got your apps tray for hiding away any bollocks. And actually very little in the way of crapware stuffed on here as well, which is always a relief. So there's bugger all, LinkedIn, there's, uh, oh, there is Facebook, Ugh. Couple other wee bits, but compared with a Xiaomi blow, this is a breath of unfettered, vaguely fresh air. There's quite a few good bits of iOS as well. So in the personalization section, plenty of options to customize your cam on. So for instance, you've got the now obligatory AI wallpaper generator, although at least Techno's version allows you to type in a sentence on whatever you like and generate a paper based on several different styles. Just don't expect it to always match up with what you actually typed in. 
I've got to admit though, I do love playing around with this thing just to see what kind of stuff it actually spaffs out. Yeah. Now you've also got loads of always on displays to play around with. I quite like the planety efforts, but you can also slap on one of these sickly cute cartoony pet things or something a bit more traditional. And here on the Come On 30 Premier 5G, you'll also spy one that says Indicator Light. And this is a wee indicator light up in the top left corner of that arse end, just above the camera grill. And this can flash just to indicate that you've got an incoming call, for instance, or that the phone is charging up. But it can't be used as a full-on notifications light, which seems kind of bewildering. Like, why, why isn't that a thing? The functionality is incredibly limited on this thing. So I'm really hoping that Techno is going to put out an update really, really soon that it gives you a whole list of different options that you can use that indicator light for. You got a few other good bits chucked in here as well, like a dedicated game and mode, more on that in a bit. And so far I've been liking the 6.77 inch AMOLED display. It's an absolute beast. So certainly if you spend a lot of time watching your Netflix, your Disney Plus, doing a bit of gaming, whatever, then you're going to be pretty happy with this thing. It's a 1.5K resolution panel, thankfully. So even though it is spacious, everything stays nice and crisp. No HDR support at the moment, at least in the likes of Netflix. It's reported zero HDR10 or Dolby Vision action, but maybe that'll be coming in an update. Certainly the contrast is spot on, those blacks nice and deep as you'd expect from an AMOLED panel. Colors reasonably poppy as well, although you do have limited customization in this area in the display settings. And it's LTP or tech of course, as you'd expect, scaling from 1 to 120 hertz, otherwise you can manually set it at 6090 or 120. And also a pretty decent set of stereo speakers slapped on the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G. Complete with a tasty bit of Dolby Atmos support, of course. Let's just do a quick demonstration with that volume maxed out. So this past week, Motorola took a lot of us tech spods out to the desert. Not to execute as cartel style and bury all weasel-like bodies in a hole in the sand, thankfully, but rather to test out its fresh new Moto Edge 50 Pro. So certainly on that top volume, nice and loud and reasonably clear as well. The sound is a bit flat, of course, as you would expect from a pair of smartphone speakers. But you can always hook up a pair of Bluetooth earbuds if you want to enjoy a good bit of music. I've had no troubles with the Bluetooth stream and an ever so slight judder in London Bridge Station the other day, which to be fair was absolutely packed to the pits. Now the brains of the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G is MediaTek's Dimensity 8200 Ultra, backed here by 12 gigs of RAM. If you actually care at all about benchmarking, well, these are the Geekbench results, as you can see. Not exactly going to set the world on fire there, but respectable enough. To really put this thing through its paces, I obviously got a good bit of Genshin Impact on the go as usual. I jacked the graphics settings all the way up to the highest possible settings at 60 frames per second and took it for a spin for over an hour. Now I did experience a handful of stumbles during that game and time, a couple of them rather heavy, but generally the frame rate stayed consistently smooth and fluid. These minor glitches aside, certainly the game was perfectly playable and rather enjoyable. I actually managed to complete a mission. Can't remember the last time I did that. Although I also got absolutely mullered by some sort of giant aquatic fox twat. And stuffed inside of this hefty frame, you've got yourself a massive vapor chamber, and this certainly does its job rather nicely. The Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G does get a wee bit warm after roughly half an hour ish of gaming, but another half an hour or so down the line, it is still just a wee bit warm. It doesn't get proper toasty, and that performance never seems to be impacted. And as mentioned before, you've got yourself a pretty comprehensive gaming mode here. Three different performance options from power saving all the way up to performance, which obviously kept it at for Genshin Impact. If you scroll on down, lots more options as well, including brightness locking, which is certainly helpful, although I swear on one occasion it didn't actually do its job. You can tweak the screen sensitivity if you want to, although I found that the display was perfectly responsive at all times. Notifications blocking all the stuff you would expect. As far as the battery life is concerned, while well, Techno has crammed a 5000 milliampere capacity cell inside of the Camon 30 Premier 5G. As I say, only have my SIM slapped in there for a couple of days so far, so I can't reliably say how good or bad the battery life is. All I can say is that so far, this blower hasn't died on me before I've been all tucked up with Teddy at night. Admittedly, it was well into battery power saver mode last night. It got down to about, I think it was about 12% at the end of the day. Well, that was also with lots of background audio stream and I used the camera a fair bit, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I reckon even fairly demanding power users should be happy enough. 
And if you do find you ever need to juice it up in a hurry, well, no worries, because you've got 70 watt wired charging support on this thing, some bunger cable in it, and you can watch that battery meter whiz back up. Sadly, no wireless charging supports here though. So now let's finish off this delightful wee look at the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G with a squint at that camera tech. It's a triple lens setup. Now, I'm certainly not a massive fan when it comes to Techno's camera app because frankly, it feels like a bit of a cluttered mess. You've got loads and loads of features and toggles, some of which are like, it's not immediately obvious what some of it does. You've got multiple different filtery type options, for instance. The main photo mode is called AI Cam, which can be confusing as well. You've got lots of different extra bits, including the usual obligatory AR bollocks. If you ever fancied being a shitty AI character. Apparently this is me talking. I just look like I'm having some sort of seizure. But anyhow, that primary shooter is a 50 meg Sony IMAX 890 sensor with optical image stabilization. I found this pumped out some pretty decent HDR pics, although they're certainly more aesthetically appealing than they are authentic just like what you'd get with an iPhone. We're talking crispy detail, even in those darker regions. Quite balanced lighting overall, although sometimes a bright sky, for instance, can be rather blown out. Likewise, don't expect colors to always be 100% natural, but with motion capture enabled, those action snaps come out really well. You'll pretty much always get a sharp, good looking pick, even with quite rapid motion, as long as the lighting doesn't suck, of course. In the evenings, any motion does generally result in blur as usual, but otherwise you'll once again get bright, attractive snaps with some nice tonal action. And there's a night mode which slightly brightens things up if required. And this Techno Blower actually boasts a dedicated portrait shooter and it's got a built-in 3x optical zoom so you can get nice and close to your subject without treading on their toes. I could just use it as a zoom lens. It's pretty good up to around the sort of six to seven times zoom level. And by the 10 times zoom, things are starting to look a bit rough, especially if you're looking at your pics on a laptop or a TV or whatever. Those portrait snaps look rather tasty, whether you're shooting up close with the primary sensor or you're using that dedicated lens from a distance. Just remember to turn off that beauty mode bollocks because it does especially freaky things to pets eyeballs. And last up for the back end, you've got another 50 megapixel shooter, this time an ultra wide angle lens effort. And this can also be used for your macro type shenanigans. And as far as ultra wide shooters on smartphones go, it's pretty good, working well even in quite low light. Well, as for video, well, you can't shoot any 8K action, but you can shoot up to 4K resolution video at 30 or 60 frames per second. And Techno has slapped on its fresh new Polar Ace imaging system, which is powered by a separate Sony imaging chip. The undeniably catchily titled CXD5622GG. That's Sony, they come up with some absolutely banging names. And this gives smartphone video capture a proper belt up the backside, boosting the visuals when you're recording at night or when shooting high contrast scenes, while also smoothing out any rougher footage. I wouldn't say that the Techno particularly stands out against iPhones or Xiaomi smartphones or Samsung blowers, but certainly night videography is perfectly possible. You got respectable audio capture, decent enough image stabilization at that 4K level, so all good. And then last up, there's that selfie cam up front, and I'll give you one guess as to how many megapixels is packed in there. That's right, good old 50. This has built-in autofocus and it keeps you looking sharp with accurate enough skin tones and some pleasing bokeh style blurring when you switch to the old portrait mode. And here's a bit of 4K video action once again, this time shot with that selfie camera. Again with reasonable image stabilization, so even if your hand is juddering about a bit, keeps things vaguely smooth and the audio pick up again, no worries there. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in the most succulent and delicious of nutshells is the fresh new Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G. The name kind of sucks, but the phone's actually pretty bloody good. Really enjoyed my time with it so far. It's obviously quite distinctive in the looks department, that's for sure. The rest of the specs are pretty solid. You've got a decent gaming performance in there. So far, respectable battery life. That camera tech is pretty banging, actually. Anyway, that's what this bald northern get reckons, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Techno Camon 30 Premier 5G down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.